to you all and welcome to the show, if not now, when? I'm Marjorie Payon, Sébastien Badeau is with me in studio. Hi, Sébastien. Hello, Marjorie. How are you today? So far, so good, because today we're going to learn what's in store when it comes to luxury. It's been one of the hardest hit industries over the past few weeks, with sales globally dropping by 30%. But recent data actually show that demand is steadily increasing again from Asia to Europe. As this health and economic cr crisis changed the way we actually do fashion, we actually think about fashion, we actually buy items, is there room for a luxury reboot? To dive in, our guest today is probably one of the best experts in the game, Ian Rogers, the Chief Digital Officer at LVMH. Hi, Ian. Hey, thank you for having me. CDO of LVMH, or should I say, the beastie boy of luxury? <laughs> you know, however you'd like to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I'm just saying Beastie Boy, of course, because back in the days in 1993, if I'm correct, at the University of Indiana, you actually built one of the very first music website, and it was all about the Beastie Boys. Oh, was, that's correct. And then they found me, and I stuck with them to this day. So, from the 90s to now, 2020, what had happened over the past few, um, you know, like years when it comes to tech and when it comes especially to uh, artificial intelligence? Well, I mean, if you look at the beginning of the Internet till now, I think the, the you know, the simple biggest change is the, is the adoption from people all, all over the world, right? Um, and when you look at the business of LVMH, we sell to people. And, and that's why we adopt technology is because it's, integrated into the lives of our customers and you know in some ways the definition of luxury has has changed um, because you know you're, you're looking at, at people who maybe have um, a shortage of time but they have the money to to have um, a great experience so what you're use, doing with digital is you're you're stitching all of those things together to you know to, to build a, a luxury experience around luxury products I think with, with artificial intelligence, um, you know, you're, you have to be very careful because privacy and luxury are synonymous. At the same time, personalization and personalized experiences are an expectation in luxury. You know, as a result, the last thing you want in your digital experiences are things that feel mass. And so I think, you know, what, what we, you know, the guiding light for us when it comes to, to data and artificial intelligence is, First of all, you know, really protecting the customer's interests, never doing anything that you wouldn't tell a customer you were doing. That's the mistake that so many, you know, companies, tech companies and others have, have gotten caught up in. And the thing that you do do is things that are good for the customer, right? So personalization is, is the most obvious one. It's not any different than the way that we communicate with our friends, right? I mean, I don't remember all of my mm -hmm. friends' birthdays, but they are in my calendar <laughs> on my phone, so I remember to call them, and I think there are kind of there are, there are plenty of parallels in the, in the luxury business as well. Speaking of creating unique uh, user experience and customer experiences, what is this one tech tool you envy from one of your competitors? Ben Arano said many years ago, brick and mortar is king. And you know we've had this conversation, and what he meant was customer experience is king, and the customer experience in our stores is exceptional relative to you know what you can offer online and so you know especially now that people are communicating at a distance more and more we're really you know looking at tools that, that just help us have an incredible experience um, you know from wh when we're when we're far away mm -hmm. from the consumer I think the other thing to do is to really rethink our, our web experiences so that they are application-like, mm. right? Um, I think that we still treat websites kind of as this information repository, whereas, you know, when you open an app like Uber, it, it's not an information repository. It's, a, uh -huh. it's an experience. And I think that in, and so there are retail experiences that are like that as well. When you look at, say, Warby Parker, you know, they, they, it's a very purpose-driven mm. kind of intention, beginning, middle, end kind of customer journey and I think those are the kinds of things that I look at, you know, some envy. Stories, which is crucial though, because the minute uh, lockdowns have been eased, we've seen, I mean, lots of customers reaching out to stories and Sebastian, I would literally love to have your perspective on this. No, I mean, I think that we've always thought that like stores, we didn't, you wouldn't need to have an opposition between the stores and the online. I think like what we've been trying to build over time is really like the mix between the two. Mm -hmm. Because we understand that like, like it's the same customer. Like f 
for a long time in the West, people really wanted to say there's online and there's offline. I think in China, people always like looked at it as one seamless uh, experience. Uh -huh. And I think that's, that's, we've, that's what we've seen. Uh, obviously, lockdown has created a bunch of things. Like people really, when they came out, there was this idea of like revenge buy, which is going crazy because mm -hmm. they were locked down for so long. I'm not sure I love that term, but, I yep. but, but, but you do see how much Gen Z especially was really thirsting for the store experience. Uh -huh. But the demand and, and the desire was always there. And I think that like, you know, COVID was also a way for a lot of brands to continue the relationship, do it through different technical tools, but really dive maybe even deeper in the relationship with the consumer. Yeah, relationship is key, but also how do you use or use or how do you adapt actually to this new uh, trend and to this new normal um, being being more fashion and eco-conscious, being more aware of the impact you can actually have on the society itself. I mean, look, I would, it's nothing new for, for LVMH and luxury brands in general. I think, you know, the great thing about luxury is that it's always been about quality mm -hmm. and craftsmanship and kind of, you know, sustainable in that way, right? It's never been about, you know, fast fashion, massive factories, overproduction, you know, the, the nature of the industry really is about quality. And when you look at a brand like Laurel Piana as an example, mm -hmm. there it's, you know, it's just part of their DNA to take care of, you know, they're a textile company and they are a high-end textile company. So it's never been about, you know, kind of driving the cost down. It's been about driving the quality up. Mm -hmm. I think that's another thing for why luxury works well online is because in the same way that we've moved from mass to niche, we've also moved from kind of marketing and volume driven really to more quality driven from a customer perspective mm. you know where you know you can as benedict evans was showing the the searches for um cheap versus the searches for good mm. have kind of crossed paths on the internet uh, a long time ago so i think that mm -mm. you know that that's kind of built in but also you know and i think that one thing that that the pandemic is likely to change is just sort of as, as you put it, the way that that, that value is, is perceived in people's, in people's minds. Um, I think the good news for the luxury industry is, is that they're, they've all, they're, they're kind of an obvious choice. They don't really need to make a pivot mm. in terms of what they do. You know, maybe there's a pivot in terms of communication mm -hmm. or level of investment or that sort of thing, but they're already kind of in the um, consume less, consume better mm -hmm. um, business by definition. We totally saw that because when we, three years ago, we launched Luxury Pavilion, which was really brand-centric. The idea was to answer to the brands and be able to build a platform for them to reach the Chinese uh -huh. consumer. And, and right before the pandemic, we launched a new version of it, which is called Luxury Soho, which is another platform which answers the customer needs. And the customer, what they wanted was a platform where they would be more conscious because it's secondhand. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to say, well, you know, I'm going to buy some things new, but also I want to be mindful in the mm -hmm. way that I buy products. And so some of them I want to buy secondhand. And so we listen first to the brands, but now we're also listening to the consumer and yeah. bringing the two platforms together. Which is in a way kind of metaphoric when we thought about I mean, the crisis we just experienced. Mm -hmm. I mean, it totally changed the way we perceive the way we do business, the way we think about fashion, but also the way we think about our lives. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's right, yeah. So what would be your takeaway, your personal takeaway, if I may, from this COVID experience? Well, personally, I mean, I feel very fortunate to, you know, be in a, in a good position, you know, uh, throughout all of this when many people have had a, you know, a, a more difficult time. I, I think, you know, my hope is that, you know, we're all taking as much advantage of we, as we can of the moment of, of hitting that reset button. Um, I think that what we're recognizing, at least for myself, is, is a lot of momentum um, in our daily lives and it's you know it's easy to just keep doing the same thing you did yesterday and sometimes it takes something like this to, to force you to hit the pause button um, and you know and reevaluate you know what is really you know important in your life so you know for me I think it's 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 about you know different ways of managing time and and you know managing personal habits and 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 those sorts of things but you know you really you know, think about what that means on a global scale, particularly at this moment, the macroeconomic situation, the geopolitical situation. Um, you know, I, I think it's it's uh, it's it's going to take a lot of a lot of care and a lot of involvement from all of us and the companies that we work for and, mm -hmm. and our and our and our governments to to you know to to keep the world safe. Mm -hmm. We're we're at a we're definitely at a major turning point for humanity right now. 
time to reflect on what we've just been experiencing for the past few months. Thank you so much, Ian Rogers, for this discussion. Thank you so much, Sebastian. Thank you, much. And it's all we have time for, but stay tuned. More episodes to come on If Not Now. When? Thank <music> you.